Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Guys, is there a way or is there a method in which the modern swing changed the modern racket in swing through geometry? Stay tuned. All right, coffee sponsor of today is Patrick Fitzpatrick. Patrick Fitzpatrick is a member of my coffee club and has been supporting me for a while now with my coffee of the day. So, as a member of my coffee club sponsorship, Patrick hooks me up with one coffee a month and seems to, you know, like hooking me up. So, I appreciate you, Patrick Fitzpatrick. If you want to be my coffee club sponsor of the month, or of the day, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. You want to just support the channel and don't really want to hook me up with caffeine, uh, super thanks is the way. Link is below. All right. I appreciate everybody out there for hooking me up, coffee or no coffee, but mostly it's coffee. So thank you. All right. So Geometry of a racket, what's going on? Well, I know nobody's really covered this subject before, and it actually came from one of our viewers. And then I'll, let me read this to you. Hey, Harry, I really enjoy the diversity of tennis content you keep on uploading. When I saw the Tokyo final of Fritz and Tiafo, I noticed something special. It occurred to me that the forehand of all the E-Zone 98 players like Tiafo, Curios, Bobic, and Kokonakis seem to have a special look. It seems to be a combination of technique and racket geometry. When swung, all the 98s or the E-Zone 98s seem, remind me of the old wooden frames and first metal frames. Those with longer throats and head which weren't that oval. It does make sense to me that special geometry with a special forehand technique. I am sure it also affects the other strokes, but the forehand was the most uh, noticeable to me. I don't know if you think that's interesting too, but if yes, I guess you can analyze it in a much more entertaining fashion. And it was from Alexander. Okay, Alexander. Yes. This is a very interesting subject because the first time that anybody has brought this to my attention was about four years ago. And it was Coach Steve Jackson. Like we did a video over at his place about a year ago and he had mentioned exactly what you're talking about. Now, if you look at this pure strike, like Coach Jackson always says, it was the pure strike that he noticed it the most. It's got a deep, deep throat here that kind of comes in tight, right? And it's actually split narrowly here. Okay, if you look at, let's say, an E-Zone 98, it's it kind of, it's not even as deep as this. So I'm going to go forward with it and bring it together and I'm going to spin it around. Okay, so if I, I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So you see how low this strike goes? versus the E zone, right? That's a pretty significant distance. 
And if you look at where the bridge starts, it's almost in the same spot. But what does this do? What does this do when it's this deep versus not so deep? So I'm going to go side by side. You can tell that that's about a good inch, if not even more. Right? So this racket, that's the E-zone that you talked about, Alexander, um, kind of stays with you a little bit more because this is narrower. This is in closer. So when you swing it, there's not so much of a, a lag or a drag. And when you hit it, it feels like it's with you. It's connected to you. Versus this one, where if you take a shorter swing, that it's like, it, it doesn't like it. All right. So Coach Jackson said, this is built for a person like Dominic Team, right? Who, who has that big, long swing that can, you know, has that, that fast come through and, and take off, right? If you don't have that long of a swing, a racket like this is kind of hard to wield. Now, the reason we talked about that four years ago was his own son, Ryder Jackson, who plays that cow right now. He was playing with the T-Fight 305, and when they switched to a new one, I don't remember the name of the the model, but they elongated this throat, right? Which literally, literally killed his timing. So we're talking top junior now. And he was like, I can't do this. This is not it. Um, I don't know what's wrong. And I got to use the old rackets. So he literally used his old rackets until you, they couldn't be used anymore. He had me go to Technofiber and say, I need the old ones. I need the old mold. So I said, well, let me see what I can do. And surprisingly, Technofiber said, yes, we can make you four of the old ones in the new cosmetic. I'm like, oh, they're like, yeah, we don't have a problem doing that. So I was like, okay. So Coach Steve and I actually talked about this a, a little more in detail. And there's only a few rackets, though, that has that elongated throat. This, the new, even the new T-Fight 305 has that long throat. I mean, even a pro stock level racket like this, if you look at it, the new Ega, right? It's deep. It's deep. Look at this, it's deep. But where it's different is that it's the same depth, but this throat comes down a little lower to help it along. So the only way I can describe it without you um, trying it yourself is that the racket comes through faster. It, there's not so much drag. Okay. It doesn't feel like you're jammed. If you have a medium to shorter swing, it doesn't work for you. It feels like you're, you're kind of jammed and it, the ball doesn't go anywhere without you, you know, wailing at it, let's say. I mean, even the TF40, TF40 305 over here, it's, uh, if you look at it, it's deep, right? That's the same. That's almost the same. Right? Go side by side. It's, it is not even as deep, actually, now that I'm looking at it. It's like about a half inch difference. So there's more drag still in the strike. Let's look at V-Core Pro 97. Okay? Now, this is similar. Okay? So these two have very similar characteristics, as you can see. Okay? So this would be that type of racket that needs a longer swing. Let's look at blades. How about a blade?
Yeah, yeah. So a blade would be almost similar to that. Right, turning it around. Yeah, yeah. So a blade would be almost, or would be that type of racket. Now the final one is a pro staff. And the pro staff is very similar too. Very similar. Yep. So, these two, these two. In order to hit with these four rackets, what do they want you to do? Longer swing, possibly. And if you don't have a, at, if you don't have a longer swing, at least a fast swing. And I'm only talking forehand, guys, because if you don't have that Dominic team type of swing, um, it's not going to be that easy to come through for you because it wants the fullness of that swing. Okay? But we've just analyzed, you know, like the geometries, the, the, the way these things are built for um, certain types of players. So it's not as simple as flex, swing weight, balance, overall weight. Now we're looking at throats and, you know, depth of throats now. So next time you go out and try a racket and you're considering one of these, ask yourself, do I swing like Dominic Team? If the answer is no, maybe consider trying something else. All right. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. So what is this thing? I don't know. It says satisfying pop, so it's kind of interesting. Harry, are you ready? I'll be right there. We, we really wanted to go hit before we had to team, leave town. Team, team. I don't mean to be rude. Give me a second. Give me a second. Well, Harry said, uh, like, I, I really actually wanted to go ahead. Harry! Can you hurry it up? I don't, I don't mean to be rude, but we, we have an Uber coming. Okay, it's a little tight. It's a little tight. I'll be right there. We're going to miss our flight. It's yeah. not worth it for... Harry, come on. Like, kind of last chance, man. We got to go. All right, all right. Almost there. Almost uh, there. Harry, it's been great working with you. We got to take off. Good luck, man. Oh, Thanks, oh, Harry. oh, oh. Good luck. I'm ready. I'm ready. Guys, I'm ready. Guys. Guys, I'm stuck. Ian, Joel, anybody? Guys, I'm stuck. Leonard, are you here?